38. Partly to mostly cloudy skies developing tonight in the mid to upper 20s. Chance of rain showers, temperatures in the low 40s Saturday, partly to mostly cloudy. Rain showers in the mid to upper 30s Saturday night. And more rain showers expected Sunday, partly to mostly cloudy in the mid 40s. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 102.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Around 90 migrants are feared dead after a boat capsized off the coast of Libya. British Prime Minister Theresa May is facing increasing pressure to explain her priorities on the UK's future trade relationship with the EU. Close to a 1,000 miners have been rescued from a gold mine in South Africa. And in Australia, an excavation at a factory site in Adelaide has been called off after failing to find the remains of the missing Beaumont children, ensuring the 50-year mystery of their disappearance will continue. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. I don't know about you, but I've been looking forward to today. It's been a long week uh, with my classes, so I'm just ready for a mental break. So if you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, I'm your host, Kobila Hardin, and I have two very special guests with me today. Miss Brandy Hodges, who is not a stranger. Hey, Brandy. Good morning. <laughs> and I also have Miss Christy Gates from the also <laughs> from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. Good morning to you. Good morning. And before we get started, I just want to let everybody know that today is Wear Red National Wear Red Day, in recognition of women's heart health. So. Put on your red for a cause. Do something heart healthy today. Make one change uh, to increase the quality and the health of your heart. And do some research to see what are some of the risk factors that we as women um, have that can link to heart disease and other issues. So, alrighty, let's get into our show today. So, we're going to be talking about all things library and an upcoming event and some other upcoming events. Um, I know genealogy night is coming up very soon. Um, those have been really big hits. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Brandy and Christy. So we have our genealogy night lock-in. You may recall that this is something that the library does in the summer, but it's something we started doing in the winter as mm -hmm. well. Yes. Um, it's uh, this Saturday from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., and it's a great time for you to come and get started with genealogy research. Or if you've been working in genealogy, you can come and people can, if you're gotten stuck or anything like that, we have local genealogists on hand to answer questions and everything. It's a great evening. So what's really fun, um, what I've seen, is they, they have like little signs that say beginners and, and are you stuck? You know, it's really, it helps you <laughs> mm -hmm. as you're moving through. It's, um, a lot of times, I know me, sometimes I, I sometimes don't want to ask for help. I want to mm -hmm. try to figure it out by myself. But there are folks on hand at this event. Our summer event will have a guest speaker, mm -hmm. and it's more got um, more of a theme. Typically, yes. In the, during the summer months, we usually have a, a special speaker that comes in and talks about something related to genealogy. Um, years, I think a few, either last year or the previous year, we had someone that came in and spoke about um, genealogy related to African Americans. Um, okay. we Native Americans a Native, years ago. Native Americans as well. We've also had somebody come in and talk about um, DNA, which is becoming a really big trend oh, wow. in genealogy. Um, you can get these DNA kits through Ancestry.com, I believe. So that's one of the also popular trends. And we will have a station for people who are interested in that. We do have a local genealogist to help with the DNA research as well. So with those uh, DNA kits, have they been proven to be pretty accurate? That's supposedly, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, t I know of two of my coworkers who have actually um, have done the process okay. and they came back fairly accurate. Okay. So. All right, so it at least gives you a, a picture or a starting point on maybe where to start doing some more research. Definitely. I mean, it shows you where, I'm trying to think of the words, but <laughs> <laughs> in other words, it shows you where other lineages are from. Like, you might be surprised to find out that you're part Italian or 
okay. in my case, I'm from most of my heritage is from Germany, so it kind of helps oh, wow. with that starting point as well. Okay, but you know, the summer one has more of, of a of a focus on a specific direction. Okay, but the winter one is all about getting back to the basics. It's mm-hmm. focused on just doing the research. Okay, so it's it's a it's a shorter event in the summer. We go until midnight because we're genealogy party animals. <laughs> but this winter one, we are going until ten o'clock. But what we do is the library is open from 9 until 5 tomorrow. Okay. And then this event starts at 5. So you'll um, be able to sign in. You can, um, <clears throat> well, there's two things you can do. Um, you can also pre-register at our website today. Today is the last day to pre-register. Or you can come at a little before 5 p.m. and register at the door as okay. well. So there's two ways that you can do that. And also, um, like I said, it's from 5 to 10, and as Brandy mentioned, it's a, what's great about this evening, we use it solely for research. So this is a great opportunity to use all the resources the library has available, like um, books, um, records. We also have a lot of our online resources. Like I said, do we have free access to Ancestry? Um, one of the other ones is FOD3. It's a military database that you can do research. Um, there's also the American Genealogy Bank, yes, and it has a lot of the historical newspapers where you can go back and put type in a name and a date and do research that way as well. I always find it fascinating to watch people use the microfilm machines <laughs> because we have, is it two of those that we have? Um, we have, yes, we have two microfilm machines and I think we have three readers. So what I mean by microfilm machines is that you can actually do prints off of those and print things from like... Um, tax records, newspapers. Um, we have most majority of the Jonesboro Sun on microfilm that you can print off as well. We also have it available on CDs too. So it's a lot of great opportunities to do research. I always like to remind people, if you've not been to the library lately, the genealogy area, if you park on Cherry Street where the largest parking lot okay. at the library is and you enter um, the library, you'll have um, the circulation desk right in front of you. If you will turn to your right and then take another right and walk all the way down this long hallway, okay. the genealogy area, which has extended its bounds, from what it was when I first started working there is going to be on your left and if you get confused get lost there are people there that can help you but that collection is available year round Mm -hmm. we have these special events where there are volunteer experts on hand but you know you don't have to have that special invitation for these events we want you to come to them but you don't have to attend one of these events in order to use these resources I think it's high time that people really start doing more research and get to know their family history and that way you can pass on these stories and these legacies and your family history is not lost because we look back at okay it's coming up to a special event we don't know anything about grandma so-and-so or great grandpa whoever and this younger generation don't have any Thing to pull from any information to pull from <laughs> this isn't as like important as knowing you know specific things about your lineage but i'm fascinated by the names i'm <laughs> oh, just yes. throwing this out there i was <laughs> i wanted to do practice research so okay. that i would be able to articulate what the what it's like to okay. do it and so i went on and i felt like i went down a rabbit hole <laughs> earlier this week but i went on our website as miss christie said um, you can go to our website and um, click on research, and there's a database tab that pops down. You can go to www.libraryinjonesboro.org. Miss um, Quabila is going to do it on her computer. Um, and um, from there, you can look at the databases. We have a, a tab that says genealogy databases, and um, ancestry.com um, is, or dot, ancestry is one of them. And um, we have the library edition so that you can. Um, um, as long as you're within the library um, at Jonesboro or Harrisburg, mm-hmm. you can use this database. And it's like what you can pay a subscription for, the Ancestry. It's just a library version of it so that anyone can have access to it as long as you're in the library building. Um, but I have a great uncle, Ambrose. Ambrose. And I just, <laughs> I was fascinated by some of these. And I have a great, great, great Aunt Florence. And she was the oldest sister of the family of 13 children. That is really interesting. Mm -hmm. So I just, I I, I saw Ambrose and I'm like, is that a girl name or a boy name? 
you know? And so I looked more into it and it, it's awesome because it's not just, I had someone ask me earlier this week, well, how accurate is that? And so what I can only say for that is you're not looking at a printed record. Okay. No. You're looking at the actual written census data from 1870 mm-hmm. or from wherever. Um, one of my coworkers, as he puts it, these people came around and were handwriting most of the census work. So a lot of it was transcribed. Don't get me wrong. There are some times where the names are spelled oh. every which way. Um, <laughs> my, for example, my... It, Let's see. It would be my great grandfather. His name, I believe, was Alfred, and I've seen it spelt different ways. You wouldn't think Alfred would be spelt so many ways, but I've seen it spelt three different ways on a three lot of records. Ways. Because what they said the other day is the census workers would come by and maybe they were out working the farm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so the neighbor would yeah. say, "Oh, well, that's that's where Alfred lives." Okay. And well, he didn't know how to how Alfred spelled his name. I have my great great grandmother is Alice. It's spelled A L I C E. It's spelled A L L I C E. So I don't know which way it actually was spelled. Oh wow. Um, because in the census data, it's spelled different ways. It's spelled this way in one census, and then the next census it's spelled another way, and then it goes back to the other way in in a census from another year. But it's really, really neat to do this. And so I've gotten stuck, you know, just doing this on my own. And so I plan to ask questions tomorrow night. And so we just encourage anyone who, if you just have an inkling of interest Mm -hmm. in your family history, but you don't know what to do, what's kept you from getting started is... A lack of information. Yes. You. All I started with was I knew my um, mom's mom's name. Okay. And so I started from her name. And from her name, I knew what her mother's name. And went, oh, there's, there she is. Okay. And I just worked backwards using Ancestry. But as Miss Christie said, we've got lots of databases. We talk about these online databases. But when you come to the library, you're going to see... Stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of books we've got. Um, we have a lot of the indexes. Uh, I'm trying to think. Marriage indexes, uh, wow. land probate records. That's always good to find out, you know, where they were living, if they own land, if they were sharecroppers, you know, very stuff like that. Death records, um, birth indexes, cemetery records. Cemetery. If you, you know that you had a family member who lived in this area, mm-hmm. but you don't know where they were buried at, or you want to, you want to see it in the book. I mean, it's just, I can't, I, I can't even say how interesting it is to look at all of these. And people ask often, too, is it just Arkansas? But it's more than just Arkansas. We have, um, we have something on practically every state. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of the states that are kind of further to our, I would say, north or west of us, <laughs> okay. we, we may have one or two things. But we do have, you know, all the states surrounding us, like Arkansas, well, of course, Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, Missouri. We have um, a lot of records that's on them as well. So, you know, it's a great opportunity. And like Brandy said, you know, you just have to start with yourself and go backwards. That's what a lot of the genealogists have told us. Okay. I need to really get on. Um, one of my aunts, great aunts, uh, did a lot of research and put some information together. But I have since lost access to the site. So... I really need to get back in there and see what's, you know, all going on and maybe update my information. What I noticed when I was using Ancestry, the Ancestry Library Edition that we have for free at the library, and I want to emphasize free, you know, people will ask, well, how much does it cost to do that? If it's at the library and it's hosted by the library, it's free. And you don't have Mm -hmm. to worry about it. You just show up. I always tell people, show up with the, um, all you need is yourself and your willingness to learn something new. Okay. Is what I tell people for just about anything we offer Definitely. because that's all you need. You just need that willingness to try something different. Um, but it's that ancestry page has a little link on the top right hand corner when you're doing your research where you can send yourself copies of the records. Okay. You know, you can print them out, mm-hmm. but it said, you know, give put your email address in. And we also have there is a fee for printing at the library, but it's not very much. And it would t- tomorrow night you can you can print these things as you go or you can email them to yourself. Okay. 
I think I would love to encourage everyone to go out. Again, this is tomorrow, Saturday, from 5 until 10 p.m. And, okay, usually you all do some type of potluck snack or something. So is that going to be going on as well? It's extra special this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this year we are doing a, a, like you mentioned, a potluck. And what we're asking for is for anyone who who participates to bring a cherished family recipe to the potluck. Um, this is another way of tying in the family heritage theme and stuff like that. So if you have a recipe that's been in your family for years that you would like to share with us, we would ask you to bring the dish and also bring a copy of the recipe to our event. And what we're hoping to do is to get a collection of these recipes and make them available at their next genealogy night. So you can have a collection of all these recipes mm -hmm. that um, the all of the people have brought and I think that's a great idea and it's another way of tying in family heritage and yes. all that you know if you're like my family I, I I would love to know how to make my mom's you know biscuits mm -hmm. or her chicken and dumplings but she doesn't have a recipe oh, no. well, she just knows what it looks she's not it's not even what it looks like she knows what it feels like oh my God. and she can't write that down for me you know oh, I would love um, to bring so I'm gonna bring a recipe that is not so old okay but it's it's a beloved recipe of my family so but it's great if you do have those awesome mm -hmm. older family recipes um to bring um but I, I just i wish that i could understand if she could write down what it feels like for me <laughs> when she's making biscuits then i could totally make those we had um a few dishes in our family that only certain people would make you know during the holidays and unfortunately one of the matriarchs of our family passed away so no one can make the dressing like she can. And she used to make this particular cake um, with a chocolate gravy. And the only people that knew how to make it are no longer living. So it's like, okay, we let those traditions die. And that's why it's so important, not just for the library event, which we're really excited mm -hmm. about being able to share in other people's beloved family recipes but that's why it's important just to to talk to your family mm -hmm. a lot i know a, a popular thing that has become mm -hmm. is doing recorded history right you know set you can do it these phones are so you know innovated now that yes. you can videotape your family you could just do an audio recording but you know have them tell you the family recipe mm -hmm. you know have them tell you how the the biscuit dough feels <laughs> you know but that's these things are are lost to us and if we don't do anything to preserve our past we won't have it for our future that's right exactly and i feel bad that there are some things that i don't know when it comes to my mom's i know of course my grandmother but then anything beyond that i don't know anything about my dad's side of the family so we can I'm, help you with that <laughs> we can. we're really lost on that <laughs> So I definitely will be looking you all up to get some help with that. <laughs> each summer in July, um, it's the third Saturday in July each year, mm -hmm. um, we um, do a special t-shirt um, for the event. Um, each attendee who stays until midnight will get to take home a genealogy night t-shirt um, of that year. Okay. I have a few leftovers okay. from last year. Um, so. It's a teal t-shirt and it says wind back the clock. You can so that camera. Um, this t-shirt, if you, um, it's first come first served. I only have a handful of these left, Okay. but we'll have these t-shirts oh. that you can snag a t-shirt tomorrow night at this event and free event, free t-shirt. Who doesn't like that? And as Christy <laughs> talked about our potluck, it is um, what we call a shared mm. potluck. If you um, would like to participate in the potluck, we ask that you bring something to okay. the potluck. And we also have, um, we will be giving away prizes during the evening. We've got several gift cards to some, some of the local places here. So Who doesn't love a gift card? So okay. a little bit of an incentive to come. <laughs> okay, so gift cards, potluck, genealogy, fun, fun night. If you're just looking for something to do on a Saturday night, 5 to 10 p.m., instead of going out, dealing with the crowds in these restaurants, go to the library and have a good time. You know, it it may not sound on the surface like it is a good time, but it really <laughs> is. It is fun. Um, I've been with the library for a little over six years, and in that time, I mean, I never really thought about genealogy. Okay. But it just it's it's so fascinating to see people 
dig through and find things out about their family that they never knew. A few years ago, someone was there that was talking about, they were showing us a database of things that you used to get arrested for, like oh speaking too loudly in mm -hmm. church. It was just this whole list of things what? that you're like, what? <laughs> so it's just, it's fascinating seeing how things used to be done. As I was doing my family, my little bit of family research I did this week, on the census report, it listed these other people that aren't related to us. And, you know, and then someone explained to me, well, you know, they often, when they worked on a farm, they, they shared living spaces with other families. And I never thought about that. That just never really crossed my mind. And wow. you learn these things about your family things that they did, jobs that they had, because on the census record, it also lists, you know, what their occupation was. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. so it's just, you know, if you've ever wanted to learn, you know, what kind of jobs your family members had, or, you okay. know, where did they live? What kind of adventures did they have? My great, great, great grandfather originated in North Carolina. I never knew that, you know? <laughs> so you're learning things about your family. It's, it's, it's like going on an adventure. And, you know, it's like solving a big mystery is one of the ways I always put it, you know, getting to find out where you came from. I mean, that is some of one of the biggest mysteries sometimes. And as Brandy mentioned, what's great about these census each year that, it, well, not each year, but each, what is it? <laughs> ten every, years. Ten years, thank you. Every ten years when it comes out, it has a little bit of new information. So, you know, uh, one of the big things is where they lived, what type of occupation they have, um, one I think talks has their education, um, if they spoke any languages, you know, various different things uh, throughout the every 10 years. So okay. that's great to have as well. All right. So we're going to have to stop right there so we don't get cut off. Um, we're going to get ready to take a quick break. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm speaking with Brandy Hodges and Christy Gates from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. And we're talking, we were just talking about the upcoming genealogy night, Saturday, 5 to 10 p.m. You don't want to miss it, but stay tuned. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Looking for a fun way to spend an afternoon with your kids? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. With all the games, movies, and books out there, our kids still somehow find a way to whine. I'm bored. One great way to cure their boredom is to take them on a treasure hunt. Setting up a scavenger hunt around your home is easy. Just create clues and then hide them around the house in different places, under the table, in the food pantry, or on their bathroom mirror. The hunt should end with some sort of treasure. Surprise them with a small present or a scroll that says they're going to the park or out to their favorite restaurant. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Facebook? You can at facebook.com slash Mark Merrill. The Family Minute with Mark Merrill. Helping families love well. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. KLK 102.5 FM is giving away free gas in February. That's right, KLK has teamed up with Mrs. Polly's Motivational Barbecue. CAB 2098 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro in the Teletech parking lot and the Lambda Eta chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated to give you free gas. All you got to do is tune in to All Gospel Wednesday with Brother Cobbs every Wednesday in February from 11 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. When Brother Cobbs asks for the tenth caller, all you got to do is call in and say, Your Life, Your Music, KLEK. Call in to 870-277-1080. Again, that's 870-277-1080. And you will win a $30 gift card good at any come-and-go gas station. KLEK. Giving away free gas every Wednesday for All Gospel Wednesday in February. And remember, your life, your music, KLEK. KLEK, Mrs. Polly's, and Phi Beta Sigma, we do it for you. 
Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane Motors in Paragould, strongly believes in the values of family and hard work with a commitment to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who keep America free, providing sales and servicing of Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Located at 6345 Highway 49 in Paragould, 870-565-4358. Details at glensaneparagould.com and at klekfm.org. God bless our troops. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more. Performed by ASE Certified Mechanics. The all-new Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. And now back to community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Hardin, and again, I'm speaking with Ms. Brandy Hodges and Ms. Christy Gates from the Cricket County Jonesboro Public Library. In the first part of the show, we were talking about the upcoming genealogy night. It's not a locking in this time. Um, this is Saturday, uh, February 3rd, tomorrow from 5 to 10 p.m. Um, and the theme basically is... Um, it's going to be more research focused uh, for this particular event. It is. A we. Um, it is a lock in, oh, um, but it's just a shorter one. Okay, mm-hmm. a shorter lock in. It, it's, I, I, I guess we consider you know a lock in because it's after hours. Okay. You know because the library closes at five, yeah. and so you know we always we have people right, right there at the front area. So if you are listening to us and you're like, oh cool, the library's going to be open until ten. It is if you're there to do genealogy research, okay. mm-hmm. you know. But we will reopen if you if you need to come and return a book or or check out a book or anything. The library will reopen from one to five on Sunday. But this event is it's a it's I guess um, a lock in in terms of. You can come and go as you please. Okay. We're so not going to lock you in. No. I promise. The so doors like the doors are unlocked. So if you need to go out to your car, you can. And we have had that question before where somebody will be like, well, can, can I go out? And I'm like, yes, you can go out to your car and get what you need. Don't don't worry. Okay, we're not You're not trapped in the library. <laughs> not trying to keep <laughs> That would be interesting, but no. And, you know, the um, the event we have in the summer, which, you know, we'll be back to talk about that one. Um, it, it'll be happening the third Saturday of um, July. Uh-huh. I almost said February, but of July. <laughs> and so, you know, we're already planning for that. Mm-hmm. The the team who's responsible for the Genealogy Night events, Miss Christie and other members, um, um, you know they work hard throughout the year to get these events ready and and that event you know it does have things that happen at specific times because we have guest speaker or mm-hmm. we have different things that go on um, another thing I wanted to bring up for this one is we will have now this is my favorite name the scan diva which is okay. our scanner it will be available right we do um as Brandy mentioned, one of the things we've been working on is to have a, a digital collection of old photographs and other things. So we recent, well, I guess it's been about a year, maybe about a year, yeah. Yeah, we recently purchased a what is called Scandiva. And That's you the can, best name. It is amazing, <laughs> but you can. Um, it makes um, digitizing your photos so much easier. Uh, in fact, during the evening, one of our, one of my coworkers, Nathan, he will be giving a demonstration on how how he uses the um, Scan Diva. Okay. <laughs> but you can bring in old photographs, uh, anything here in this air, Northeast Arkansas area, and we will scan them, and we'll also make them available on a jump drive that you can take home with us. But we're going to add it to our collection of photographs wow. that we have available on our website. It's called Timeline. Yes. Yeah, 
if you haven't checked that out you can also find that on the uh library's website and i'll Thing. You go to research at the okay. top. There's a tab mm -hmm. at the top. If you um, hover over research, timeline is the okay. last thing on that um, that little drop down menu. Timeline includes um, pictures from Jonesboro and um, Craighead County, some Poinsett County photos. Those are the um, the two counties that we cover um, with our library. And um, what I like to tell people is, if you're from this part of Arkansas. You know, if your family's from here, we all have a box of pictures. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sure everybody, my family does. I'm sure mm -hmm. every family has some sort of container of old pictures. And we want as much information as you can give us about that picture. But if you have no idea who the people in that picture are, we still will scan it into our system. Because what is so interesting is last year I was doing um, an event and we... Um, as you know, because I gave you some of them, handed out postcards, old postcards um, last year. Um, and I still have some of those that I'll have out tomorrow night. Um, but one of the postcards, I was at an event and I had an older lady in a wheelchair come up to my table and she got this very surprised look on her face. And I, my immediate reaction was, oh my goodness, what have I done? You know, <laughs> but she said that that was her grandfather in that picture. And we had no idea who that right. man was. So she helped us identify that picture mm -hmm. wow. because she knew who it was because she had seen that photo all her life. Um, and so now in that record, when you go to Timeline and you find that picture, there will be a man's name is listed. It? And so what we ask is even if you don't know who the people are in that picture or what the house is in that picture, because we don't just want pictures of, of people. You know, if you have pictures, old pictures of farmland. Farms, um, old build, we have old buildings, the historic downtown buildings. We have a lot of pictures of those. You know, we'll take anything. Because someone out there oh may be able to identify mm -hmm. it. Okay. All right, so start collecting your old photos and I'll take them to the library and let them scan them so that other people can see these and they may recognize the photo and be able to give the historical background, uh, historical information to the photo. Because this isn't just a local database that's only available locally. It's on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can access it through our web um, webpage at any time, so it's okay. a great resource. Alrighty. So let's get into some other events that are going on at the library. Um, with this being Black History Month, you all always do something special. So tell us what do you have coming up? Well, we have, um, last year we had um, the Fullness of Joy Ministries Choir come. And they are going to be joining us once again this year. And I don't know if you have ever, anyone out there has ever <laughs> experienced the Fullness of Joy Choir. Um, but they they didn't they didn't just bring the house down they they brought it down <laughs> because it was just i don't know what i was expecting because i talked to you about this last year before it happened but i, I don't know i was i guess i was expecting you know just a choir to come in and sing but they put on a performance i mean there was a there was a story to everything they did which i left there with chill bumps you know because I am not someone who can sing at all, and so I very much appreciate those who can. The Fullness of Joy um, Ministries Choir will be at the library on Monday, February 19th from 6 until 7. They'll be putting on a, a performance in honor of Black History Month there at the library. Um, if um, you want a reminder that this event is going to be happening, you can go to um, our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash ccjpl. And I have created an event where you can go and um, click going to mm -hmm. the event. And I love this because it sends you a reminder before the event starts to, to say, hey, you, you're going to go to this thing, remember? Um, so we have that event coming up. And I can't emphasize enough how amazing it is. But it's, we're so pleased to be able to provide um, an environment for um, this choir to come in and showcase their talent and um, bring um, a little necessary attention to um, celebrate Black History Month. I remember seeing some video from the last year's event and they put together 
a skit kind yes of. I, I, um, I didn't really know what to call it it, <laughs> it was amazing they have some very talented individuals over there um chris conaway and christy conaway who works with the youth department they're always doing something theatrical <laughs> i'm just gonna that's that's the best way to put it theatrical well and i have pictures <laughs> on our um event if you go to our fa or um, our website which is www.libraryinjonesboro.org okay. and you find the celebrating black history month um uh, you have it right there on your screen okay. um it will have photographs from last year um and there are also photographs you can find on our website but um there are you could see the performance there were drums there were there was a piano there was you know a keyboard there were the guitars and and the the house was packed and so we encourage everyone to come out but you know come early if you want to get a good seat yes. <laughs> um but you know one of the photographs is a young lady in a white skirt and she was doing right a dance that was just it was expression and it was just so good and it it's it's a great way to just not only celebrate black history month but experience the talent we have in this community yeah. i always want to encourage that because you know you can watch performances uh, on television or, or, or anything from other places, mm -hmm. but only at events like this one can you experience this local talent. And just, I'm always amazed by the things people can do. And then it also gives you a taste of culture because we have so many ethnicities represented within our city. It's good to see other individuals and what they bring to the plate bring to the table basically yeah i'm with you <laughs> so we need to celebrate each other yeah um believe it or not we have more similarities than differences but anyway that's a whole other story okay <laughs> well and another event we've got coming up this month is so that one's happening on monday the 19th the next week on monday the 27th we have the return of tommy terrific Mr. Tommy Terrific comes to the library once a year in February. Okay. He always comes for Black History Month. And each time he comes, Miss Kay, our children's librarian, she likes to call it fun educational. <laughs> so it's you'll you'll not only have fun, but you learn something. Okay. And it's we're not tricking the children by by <laughs> making no. them learn something. <laughs> but it's it's they last year, um, Tommy Terrific's show, it's Tommy Terrific's Wacky Magic. Um Tuesday the 27th from 6 until 7 but he um, last year it was the Tuskegee Airmen okay. were his focus topic and so his show had um, flying tricks and things of that nature this year it's going to be all about George Washington Carver oh, wow. and so by the end of this hour long magic show the kids and their parents and, Br and Brandy will go away <laughs> having known something now that they didn't know before okay and you know we're we're having fun we're having a magic show but if you can go walk away from something especially at the library it's it's hard to come to the library and not learn something yes. right right <laughs> i mean that's part of it and have fun too <laughs> but we want you to have fun so that's why we have these magic shows and and tommy terrific is just great he puts on a great show it's it's always um his his show is to give you a little highlight mm -hmm. it's he's Uncle Fumperninker or something like that. I think, that, yeah. It's, uh, some, he has an uncle who's mm -hmm. the magician, and he can't find him. And so he's, you know, dressed in um, a colorful outfit with a little um, airplane. Um, propeller. Propeller. Hat. Hat. Yeah, hat. propeller. And so he's and a kid who has to do the magic show, and the audience has to help him. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of fun. So if you have a little one, um, if you are a parent, um, grandparent, caretaker, or you know you have a friend who has a child who you know would enjoy a magic show, it's my favorite price free at okay. the library. So you, can't you know it's you can't free. you can't beat free, <laughs> and it's it is a lot of fun each year to watch um, this magic show. And again, we're learning about um, African American history. We're learning about George Washington Carver and we're celebrating Black History Month. And we like to do that. We like to do events at the library to, as you mentioned earlier, celebrate each other. That's right. right. I love how you all have so many events. And when I tell you this calendar is jam packed, <laughs> like between the exercise classes, the story time, after school activities, you have a Valentine's Crafts 
day coming up. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> so so we have events for all ages. So if you're, uh, if you have children, you know, we have great events for children. But if you don't have children, we have great events for adults. Okay. If you have children and you're an adult, we have great events for both. And we have events for teens. So um, every other month, we partner with um, the TLC um, Learning and Tutoring Company to offer a mock ACT test. Um, that is, we don't have one on the calendar right now, but okay. we just had one in January, so it'll be happening again in a month or so. But that's something that we, we have on our calendar. Um, teens will have to pre-register for that event, but it's free. Um, we do a random fandom Friday. That's happening tonight. So if you have a teen, 13 to 17 years old, who is looking for something fun to do that you know that they'll be safe at, random fandom Friday happens every month at the library, and it's where they pick a different fandom they pick a different fandom um they sometimes watch a movie i know they do some sort of activities something fun some crafty there's, thing usually there's food there okay. is yeah there's she <laughs> almost always has food especially when it comes to teens and oh, it, they wow. start at seven o'clock for random fandom friday and it's just it's a way for teens to just you know it's the Friday after they've had a week of school. You know, they need to take their mind, you know, onto something fun. Okay. And where better than to do that than at the library? Um, we also, you mentioned exercise classes, so thank you for the reminder. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, we have a change to our exercise schedule okay. coming up starting next week. We have let, um, taught Zumba Fitness at the library for many years, and we will continue to do so. However, that class has been held on Monday nights at 5.30. It will be moving to Thursday nights. Okay. So um, our Zumba Fitness classes um, will be held on Thursday nights from 5.30 until 6.30 starting next week on Thursday. So we will continue our Tuesday classes, Mind and Body with Eastern Livity. Okay. That is, right now they're doing... Um, I cannot recall what they're doing currently. I believe it's yoga. Okay. But they do either yoga, Pilates, or gyrokinesis throughout the year. I believe they're doing yoga until mm. May. And then they'll do Pilates until the fall. And then they'll do gyrokinesis. Okay. So they, they mix it up. But that class I really enjoy because I'm not the... I, if I, I'm afraid if I took Zumba, I would fall down. Oh, no. I've taken Zumba and... I. I I try. I'm not very coordinated. But anyway, it's a great class. It is a fun class. But, but I like the mind and body class because it's not as fast movement. Okay. And they walk you through each movement before you mm -hmm. do it. Um, it's very slow. Um, and then there's time where there's just quiet um, reflection time, which I a lot of times need because, you know, I'm a high-stress person sometimes. <laughs> and so that's a really fun class. And then, you know, if you don't have time to take an hour-long class, we have a half-hour yoga class mm -hmm. every Thursday from 12.15 to 12.45. I bet that is so relaxing. I know people, some people who are not familiar with yoga, um, I know people who did it, and you can lose weight with it because you're working your core muscles. Well, and you're also strengthening your muscles and lengthening your mm -hmm. muscles. And I, I carry a lot of, of tension. Shocker, I know, because I'm never stressed out, right? <laughs> but it's, it's a great class to just relax you, you know. And when you're relaxed, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it could help in lots of different ways. Okay, so when you get done with yoga, you need to go over to the Blackberry Art Museum and do some of their mindfulness yeah. <laughs> classes as well. <laughs> but we, we have all of these um, exercise classes, and I just wanted to point out that um, Zumba Fitness is changing. But as I was reminded this week, the classes are for all skill levels. All mm -hmm. skill levels. And they're free, which is free, a, a free, great. Free. If you're looking, a lot of times this time of year, a lot of people are looking to make a change. You know, people make New Year's resolutions to, to get healthier or to lose weight or to begin an exercise class. But going and paying for a membership that you may not ever really use is expensive. And so if... If you are interested in taking a class, maybe you want to get a gym membership, but you want to, you know, kind of practice a little taking a class yeah. first before you join a gym, come to the library because um, <laughs> it's free and it's fun. And we just, we get out, we get out there and, you know, a lot of times people will worry about, you know, the clothing that they'll wear to the event or, you know, that there'll be, people might look at them, but, you know, 
You're focused on paying attention to what the teacher's trying to teach mm-hmm. you. We just encourage people to wear loose-fitting, comfortable clothing okay. to attend any class. You don't have to have any specialized equipment. We provide everything you need. All right. So I would also just highlight, I'm looking at the teen section. Um, tonight you have the Young Adult Friday Craft. So if you have some teens that are looking for something to do, that starts at 5 p.m. So do the craft at 5, and then you have at 6 o'clock. Well, I don't, I don't know if Random Fandom Friday, I thought that was tonight, but it's the okay. Teen Craft is tonight, so okay. we'll have to watch the calendar. That's um, I shouldn't talk without looking at my calendar, <laughs> but um, we have our Teen Craft tonight at 5, so okay. um, if, you're, um, just, if you're looking for something fun to do, but you can always, if you have a teen, go look at that calendar. Um, I'll be getting um, the March calendar up soon. Um, right now, we've got our February calendar online, and... Um, We'll have it available in the building. If not now, we'll have it up next week. But what I always tell people is if you want to know what's going on, you can always go to our online calendar. Um, It'll have everything you need to know. And you mentioned after-school activities. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of after-school activities. um, And I, you know... I like to go to after-school activities. I get to go take pictures <laughs> of them, so that's that's what I get to do. But right. we um, every Monday we have um, Lego drop uh, rock the blocks. I see. That. And then we have coloring club <laughs> where they put out different coloring sheets that kids can do, um, and they also put three or four buckets of Legos out, and kids can build and and you know come up with all sorts of different things to do. Um, my memories of Legos are um, stepping on them in the hallway <laughs> as a child. So true, you know. But they have a lot of fun, and there are pink and purple Legos mm-hmm. now, which makes my heart so glad. Um, <laughs> but we have that, and on Tuesday nights we have some crochet. We have um, just different events <laughs> on um, Thursdays each month. Um, on Thursday afternoon at four, um, each week of each month we have different activities. Every first Thursday of the month at four, we have Miss Stacy leads music and movement. Mystery author is the second Tuesday. The third Tuesday is art. And the fourth Tuesday, you get a passport to a different country. Miss Sloan takes kids on an adventure each month, telling them about a different country. Oh, wow. So there's so, so much to do. When we come back, we'll wrap up some of the events we've talked about and give you some more highlights. So stay tuned. And we'll be right back. You're tuned into Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Most Americans are intimidated by financial terms. Today, I'm talking about stocks and bonds. A stock is simply a share or piece of ownership in a company. Now, when you buy a bond, you're not buying ownership in a company. You're actually making a loan that they have to pay back on a specific future date. In the meantime, you receive interest payments as the bond owner. Bonds are considered a safer alternative to stocks because the return on investment is generally more stable and predictable. Municipal bonds are issued by state, local, or city governments to finance projects such as building schools. Treasury bonds are issued by the federal government and are considered to be the safest. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumnidst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM.
And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm being your host for today, Quabila Hardin, and my special guests are Brandy Hodges and Christy Gates from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. Um, we talked about the genealogy night coming up tomorrow. We'll make sure to give you that date and time again. And also we talked about some of the various activities that you can find on their schedule if you go to libraryinjonesboro.org at the top of the screen click on events and you can also filter the calendar by age group or the branch um, the li- public library or well, the Craig County and points at the public library covers Jonesboro, Caraway, Harrisburg Lake City, Lepinto, Martry, Monette, Wiener that's all? That's okay. <laughs> Jonesboro <laughs> all of us good job um, so we, we do, um, and I, I just, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, a lot of times when people say library, that just, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I, I don't read, I, I don't need the library, you know, and I hear that pretty regularly. <laughs> However, I want to throw out there for, for listeners that our number one checked out collection is our DVD collection. Wow. We have so many other things besides books. We've got DVDs, we also have eBooks and music and just so many other things and then we have all of our activities as well so and i downloaded the cute little libby libby app. isn't she adorable <laughs> she is adorable so um as miss christy said you can download ebooks there's an app we now have a new service oh my goodness i can't believe i did not talk about this already okay. access 360 is a new service we have that you can access access 360 um from your phone there's an app you can download AXIS 360 okay. is what it's called because overdrive is great overdrive and libby are the same company and it's something that we've had for several years but it's primarily books for adults and young adults there weren't really many offerings mm-hmm. for children and we needed that and so we have just in the last few weeks um we have access 360 which you can go on our website, click on e-media, and then there will be a, a, a drop down menu that says ebooks and audiobooks. And when you click on that, it will take you to a, um, a landing page that will explain what Access 360 is and what Overdrive is. And they're basically very similar, but Access 360 is storybooks and books for juveniles. Um, and the other, Overdrive and Libby, is books for young adults and adults. What's really special about Access 360 is that we have two um, schools that we are um, partnering with currently for a, um, I don't really remember the, the word right now, but we are um, partnering with them for a, a partnership. T- and a- yeah, I guess test would be this. Right? Um, <laughs> there are um, our first two schools that we're working with where those two schools, they are University Heights Elementary and University Heights Elema- um, Univer- um, Intermediate words, um, they are, they will be given, the students will be given access, access to <laughs> access 360 <laughs> with their student ID. Say that 10 times. I know. Yes. <laughs> so, say Miss Christie wants to check out a book from Access 360 which I support because I love children's books. Okay. Um, yeah. You want to check out a book. She will do so with her library card. She will then have the library's um, checkout time period, and she'll have to return it with her library to her library. Um, well, the, it automatically retur- really returns itself, so you don't have to worry about that. But with the schools, they will check out with their student ID, and the school can set... You know, ours is a two-week checkout mm-hmm. period. And the school sets the um, time limit, I guess that would be, on how long you can check out the book. So It's going to, it's, so it's, I, I, I want to, you know, exaggerate for folks. This isn't something we're doing specifically for the schools. This collection is available to anyone. So say we have two copies of, of a book. If Miss Christie and I check out the two copies the library has of that book, those two copies are checked out. If the school checks out those two copies, those two copies are checked out. Okay. So it's available to everyone, mm-hmm. but it's something we're a pilot program. Yeah. That's the word. That is, we're that doing is, that a is, pilot sorry. program with these two schools. Um, you can read more about it. Our newsletter will be going out 
really soon after we get back to the library. <laughs> so um, our newsletter, the library newsletter, if you're not signed up for the newsletter, you can go to our website, www.libraryinjonesboro.org, and you can sign up for it. Um, and the newsletter comes out the first couple days of the month, every month. Okay. You can read more about Access 360 on our newsletter. But um, okay. that is, it's a great thing we're interested in. But we want to talk a little bit more about Genealogy Night. If you haven't, um, we're here at the top of the show. Okay. Um, we've got about, you know, three minutes or so. Okay. Um, just a reminder, Genealogy Night is this Saturday from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. You can pre-register today. This is the last day to pre-register on our web site at libraryinjonesboro.org just um, click on the slide and it should take you there if you aren't able to pre-register today you can register at the door and it's a great time for anyone who's inter who's ever been interested in genealogy or you've been working at with gen with your genealogy family research and you found yourself getting stuck because we'll have a variety of um, local genealogists on hand to answer questions and it's a great evening for everybody and you know the the whole point of the importance of registration is that registration they get you in the in the door for door prizes. That's right. So oh. you know we like to keep a record of 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 course our attendees, but it's also hey you register at the at the door you register online, your name gets put in in the hat if you will to get a door prize. So if for nothing else for the snacks and for the door prizes go out and learn some family history at the same time <laughs> and we um also a reminder are doing the volunteer potluck of um, bringing a um, family dish along with a recipe okay. so you know if, if you don't have a, a family recipe that you want to share just bring something that you would like to to share with others but if you if you can and you would like to participate in in bringing a a, a a dish to the potluck that is something that had been served in your family before that everyone really liked that you could bring a copy of the recipe along with it we'll have something special to do with those in july okay Alrighty, so we can't thank you all enough now i also want to mention because this is something i would like to get into um even though i'm not a, I'm a woman but girls that girls who code yes girls who code <laughs> is an event that's held every monday um, at 4.30 in the training lab and it's led by our teen librarian, Miss Jessica Wharton. Okay. And they, th these girls are amazing. Mm -hmm. They are building their own website. They picked the topic that they wanted to cover. Um, they're dealing with um, the Me Too movement. Okay. Um, so it's, they are, they're not only building a website, but they're finding resources for girls in Arkansas um, to just see it's about the the rape culture that america is um really folk, a lot of of um, media and things have been about this lately so um, these girls chose this topic they've done all the work and they're building this website and it's just it's amazing to see what young minds can do when they get together wow. and they're learning coding which you know they're doing girls who code is a national movement um, that we are the first um, branch of Girls Who Code in Northeast Arkansas. So what these girls are doing is they are learning a skill and finding interest in what that skill is and what they can do with it in the future because the number of girls who are in that industry is low and there are jobs out there. Yes, ma'am. And with the way technology is going, we need to know how to operate these things because we don't know how automated things are going to become in the future but that automation has to have a code behind it that's right so and so if you can know how to to write the code then the um, opportunities are endless all right so we have a minute left give us an update on miss ida so ida <laughs> well, ida quilamina the hedgehog is our resident um lady resident <laughs> hedgehog in the children's library She's um, a hedgehog, as one would assume. <laughs> she has her own Instagram page. Um, she is Ida the Hedgehog um, on Instagram. You can see her adventures. We have a scheduled photo shoot on Monday. Oh, with Miss, We do monthly photo shoots with Miss Ida, mm -hmm. so she has lots of pretty pictures. Because, you know... I can take pictures of her in her aquarium. So if you want to visit Miss Ida, you come to the children's library. She sits in a glass aquarium right there on the corner of the desk. But, you know, she, um, it's winter and hedgehogs hibernate, which we found out the interesting way. So, yep. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we thank you so very much, Ms. Brandy and Ms. Chrissy, for joining us today. Hope everyone has a great day. Don't forget to wear your red. Thank you for listening <laughs> to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters.